Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, many different styles, but this brewery are unquestionably best known for their New England Hazy IPAs. And we've had many of those on the channel as well. And these guys are unquestionably one of the best known Swedish craft breweries these days. But the one that we're going to have a look at today is a little bit different from what we've had from them before so I'm quite curious to see how this one turns out so hopefully it's as good as the other beers we've had fingers crossed it makes for an interesting review and hopefully you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so um yeah for this review then we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again Jutebori as you would say in Swedish the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast got to get the Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition these days and for this review we are going to return to Steve Berriot's bravery once again. So this particular beer is called the Api La Redmi. It comes in at 8% ABV and this one is an Imperial IPA which you'll see is the name if you read it backwards. But uh, yeah, this beer was released here in Sweden as part of the local Osmoskalig assortment through System Bolaget for August of 2021 and they also released the Api Iza as well or hazy IP if you read the name backwards. But uh, yeah, this one I think should be quite interesting. The last one we had, which was the Api Za, was really quite nice. So I'm curious to see how the second one in this release comes out. So let's see how we get on. Always nice to review the new beers that Steve Beards are releasing. So yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Steve Beards Bravery before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit, about Steve Berriot's Bravery then, on to my brewery notes. So, Steve Berriot's Bravery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Gothenburg, Jutebori, on the Swedish West Coast, and the company was founded by Niels Hulkrantz and Richard Siemensen. Now, these two guys own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is Bar Kino and Hagavion's Cafe, which could be found on Linegatan in the city, and they opened back in 2007, and the building in which they're located is actually an independent cinema, and I didn't realise this until I actually went to visit it, and if you're curious to see it, you can check out my out and about video that I did back in October of 2019. But originally, the idea was to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars, and this led to them kegging the beer and then selling it to other pubs and eventually to bottling the beers which began in November of 2014. The original beers that they were producing though were mainly English and German styles but of course they really started to make their name when they expanded into the more hoppy American beer styles. But the original head brewer was Ole Anderson and he is also one of the co-owners of OO Brewing with whom he is now uh, involved full-time. He's been involved with them full-time since April of 2017 but he was the creator of the Amazing Haze uh, the GBG Beer Week Beer of 2016 and also the Narangi which was released under the OO brand of course. He was replaced, replaced for a short period of time by Barnaby Struva who was one of the Vice Presidents at Three Floyds over in Munster, Indiana near Chicago in the States and uh, yeah things have been uh, going quite well for them since that time as well, after losing such a good brewer. But uh, they moved to a new brewery at Partihlar in the city around this time where they were brewing 5,000 litre batches and they also began working on some sour beers there as well. But they started selling their beers in 440 milliliter cans as opposed to the 330 milliliter bottles and this allowed them to export their beers a lot more widely. But these days they've got a brew team of Ollie Banks who used to work for Beavertown in London and also Lucas Munray who previously worked for All In Brewing one of the numerous gypsy breweries in the Gothenburg area. But they've, as of summer 2020, they've just moved into a new brewery in Ringun, 
and they're considering brewing some lambic beer here from what I understand and apparently there might be the possibility for a bar and swimming facilities at this brewery as well but they opened up a bar in Stockholm earlier in 2020 and they also opened up their own folk wool shop in Gothenburg as well for those of you who don't know in Sweden folk wool is anything that is 3.5% below that can be sold in supermarkets and regular shops anything above 3.5% has to go through Sistembolaget which is the state owned monopoly but as of August 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 140 different kinds of beer and uh, they do, you know, there's a lot of really good things from them. I've had some really nice Imperial Stouts, I've had some barley wines, you know, we have a lot of New England hazy IPAs from them. So if you get the chance to try some of the Steve Berry's beers, you will certainly not be disappointed with these. So, um, yeah, I think that is everything we need to say about Steve Berry's for the moment. So, uh, if you want to learn more about this brewery, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a taste of the beer. So, I'll let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's a little bit different from what we normally get from Stieg Beriets, but uh, yeah, I think that doesn't make it any less interesting, of course. But uh, yeah, the Api Lyrechmi, or Imperial IPA, as its name might be, but there you can see Stieg Beriets spray around the top. And as I say, I'm not sure why they decided to release these ones in 330 milliliter cans as opposed to the usual 440. I'm really not 100% sure about that, and I'm not sure if they're going to be using 330s going forward actually, but uh, we'll just need to see. But apparently this beer was originally released back in 2017, and this release in 2021 is just a kind of reimagining of the beer, a rebrew almost, if you like. But uh, yeah, 8% Imperial IP or double IP, whatever you want to call it, as we said. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. I think I paid 40 Swedish kroner for this one, if memory serves me correctly. So that translates to four euros, three pounds, Maybe about three pounds fifty sterling, and I guess somewhere in the region of four dollars fifty American, maybe four dollars seventy five, just to give those of you watching in different places an idea of the uh, the price of this beer. So uh, yeah, this I think should be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, there we go. So anyway, um, as you can see, this beer is poured pretty much as you would expect from a modern <laughs> imperial. Uh, IPA. It's certainly a New England, there's no doubt in my mind about that. But um, yeah, it's supposed to be all organic, this one as well. I forgot to mention that. But yeah, before the head disappears on this beer then, you can see there is a solid half finger of a frothy, I would say slightly creamy coloured head. It doesn't look like a perfect white head, this one I would say. But there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. Uh, but overall it looks pretty nice. In terms of colour, if we shine the light through this one, it's a very, very kind of bright, rich yellow colour, this one. It's very much like a kind of mango and, uh, you know, maybe like a mango and passion fruit juice or something like this. I always like kind of uh, comparing the New England IPAs to different fruit juices just because that's what their appearance reminds me of. But remember, the colour of these beers is dependent on, one, the type of malts that you use, two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a darker colour of beer. But the type of malts that you use are the ones that determine the EBC rating, of course. Any adjuncts that you put in and any barley's that you do will also affect the colour of the beer, but usually you don't have to care about those latter two variables when it comes to uh, a New England, uh, or a New England hazy IPA, or many IPAs, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, certainly looks the part of a hazy New England IPA, there's no doubt in my mind about that. But the level of haze on this one is pretty damn impressive, even by Steak Berriot standards. This is one of the hazier ones, the superior and gloopier ones, I should say, that I've seen from them over the last little while. So uh, yeah, remember the haze in these beers depends on the uh, wheat and the oak content and also the yeast to a certain extent as well. So um, yeah, worth bearing that in mind when you think about these beers. But overall, nothing particularly surprising about the appearance of this one when we consider what style it is. But I think it's about time that we take a look at the aroma then. So let's go for it. Mm. Lost a little bit there, sugared it a bit too much, getting excited. But uh, yeah, aroma-wise, again, it's pretty much what you'd expect. So my first impression of this beer is that it's got a little bit of bite to it, this one. It actually has a fair little bit of um, 
I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a kind of wheaty pungency out of this one, which is kind of interesting. Now, as I've said in previous reviews, when it comes to these New England hazy IPAs, for me, there's six different directions you can take this style in. You know, they can be more farmhousey and uh, more farmhousey and, and sort of yeasty. They can be rye-leaning and grainy, wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy, barley malt-leaning and bready, or they can be kind of big and sweet and brown sugary. But, uh, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one, I think, is um, actually very, very nice. So, yeah, I think it's uh, it works. You know, it does work very, very nicely, but the... Um, the yeah, the aroma that comes out of this, I think, is pretty damn nice, actually. So it, gets, it certainly gets a thumbs up from me, this one, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, it's, it's got a nice bit of just pungency underneath to it. It's got a big malt base to it, this one, which I do like. So, um, yeah, let's try and break that down for you. But my first impression of this one is, is that it's got quite a big tropical fruit note to it. At the same time, it's very, very smooth and has a wee bit of citrusy character to it. But this is quite a big, bold and slightly, um, you know, slightly kind of, um, you know, kind of pungent. Uh, New England IP, uh, New England Hazy IPA, which I can certainly appreciate. So, uh, yeah, a few bits of uh, food for thought here with this beer, I have to say. So on the, um, as we say, on the, um, on the malty side of things, then, just to break it down. So at the backbone of this beer, you can definitely smell a nice kind of fresh, white bready uh, note out of this beer. There's no doubt in my mind about that. You can certainly smell some of that nice fresh barley malt in there, but you can also feel a little bit of a kind of wheaty, um, a little bit of that kind of flowery bread crusty character in there as well, for, for sure. But on top of that, you've got a nice, um, on top of that, you've got a nice big uh, kind of wheaty um, thickness to it as well. And at the back of the nose, you certainly get a little bit more of that kind of wheaty bite, if you like which you should always look out for. But yeah, the oaty notes that you get in this one are also quite nice. You almost get a little bit of sweetness and smoothness from the oats, and I certainly get a wee bit of a kind of like Werther's Original um, kind of butter candy sort of thing out of this. And when the beer is 8%, that's kind of to be expected. That's usually the boozy aspects of the, um, that's usually the boozy aspects of the, uh, of the beer coming out. But uh, yeah, the multi side of this one is pretty much what you'd expect, but I find this one to be quite wheaty and quite pungent in a sense. So, um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one, I think, is very, very nice in that sense. But on the, um, the hoppy side of things then, so back corners of the palate, um, why am I saying back corners of the palate? The back of the nose. <laughs> Oh man, this is what happens when you film beer reviews tired. But uh, yeah, at the back of the nose with this one, you certainly get a wee touch of earthiness out of it, but I think the green component in this beer really leans towards that big floral aromatic sort of thing. And I do really like how that um, how that goes together in this one. It gets a big thumbs up from me in, um, in that regard, actually. So yeah, big fruity juicy component to this beer as well, just kind of moistening up the hops if you like. But yeah, I find that this one has a big, slightly, I wouldn't say spicy, I'd just say like a really pungent floral aromatic character. And again, I really like, I do like how this beer goes about its business in that particular regard. So yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one, I think, is, um, is pretty damn nice actually. So yeah gets a thumbs up from me there but on the um the front of the nose you certainly get a nice bit of a big zesty kind of grassy character to it and there's a lot of juicy kind of tropical um fruit out of the beer too so um on that fruity side of things then there's a nice little bit of a kind of pungent passion fruit in there there's a big oily kind of mango character um so yeah, there's a big oil. Yeah, there's a big oily sort of mangoey note to it, as we say. Um, I do wonder if this is maybe like a bit of galaxy or something that's in here. Maybe galaxy and citra and mosaic and something like that. I think it's. I think there's three hops in this, and I've got a feeling 
just there's just something about experience with this tells me it could be galaxy a little bit of citra and a wee bit of uh, mosaic I've got a feeling about this but yeah you certainly got a nice little bit of a kind of pungent passion fruit out of it but there's a big kind of juicy slightly oily mango in there a little bit of apricot underneath and some kind of pineapple notes as well but uh, I certainly get a little bit of a kind of oily tangerine character out of this one too, but there is quite a bit of zestiness there, like a little bit of a slightly lemon lime thing mixing in with the kind of more pungent grassy esters. So yeah, the, the kind of fruity side of this beer is quite nice and oily and juicy, and it's got a good balance between the kind of more tropical and citrusy fruits. So yeah, just pay attention to that aroma before you get stuck into it. I think that's always half the experience when it comes to these craft beers is just, you know, taking in the aroma a little bit. But um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. So this one is the Appy Lyrectomy Imperial IPA. Got it wrong in the last video. I felt like an absolute dumbass. I didn't realise that these beers, it's just the name spelled backwards. But uh, yeah, an 8% Imperial IPA, double IPA, whatever you want to call it, New England Hazy from uh, Steve Barrett's Brewery in Gothenburg up on the Swedish West Coast. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange Skull, cheers. Yeah. That is pretty nice, actually, I have to say. I really like how this one um, has got about its business, and it's it's the same kind of quality you would expect from steep areas, absolutely. So, I mean, the question that's in my mind is... Um, you know, the question that's in my mind is, how do we, um, you know, is, th is this a little bit different? I mean, the mouthfeel comes across as a little bit different, and the way that some of the grainy characters in this beer are coming out is a little bit different. And I've always found this with organic grains. They almost just have a little bit more of a slightly chalky mouthfeel to them, if that makes sense. So, yeah. That's certainly worth bearing in mind with this one. Um, but yeah, that um, overall this beer, again, it's really solid and really drinkable for me, so it gets a thumbs up. Yeah, I guess I think it gets a thumbs up for me for sure. So yeah, let's try and break this down a little bit more for you then. So straight away, um, I would say that this beer is quite, um, you know, it's. It, when you go across the middle of your palate then, you can feel that kind of soft, white bready base there. And that's the barley malt, of course. That's blanked in the middle third of your tongue and the back third of your tongue. And I like how that goes together. Um, when you go further into the aftertaste, you can feel there's a little bit of a kind of, you know, that sort of flowery uh, kind of thing. You get a little bit, like it's almost like you've got a fresh, uh, one of these fresh loaves of bread that you've just picked up from the bakers and there's a wee bit of flour left underneath. That's what you kind of get in this one. But sitting on top of that, you can feel the wheat, and the wheat is quite smooth, but it's thickening out the beer uh, all the way. So baseline, baseline of the beer, soft white bready note, thicker wheaty notes on top of it, and that's the middle third and the back third of your palate. But let's focus on the middle third of the palate for just now. So at either end of that middle third of your palate, you've got a wee bit more of a kind of, you've got a little bit more of a kind of bread crusty element to it. So again, Pardon me, I can uh, appreciate I can appreciate how that comes out. I do like having a wee bit of a bread crusty note there. You will feel a wee bit more graininess coming out of this beer the further that you go into it. But on top of the wheat, you can feel a little bit of a slightly smoother oaty note in there. But the, the thing that's interesting with this is that the wheat and the oat kind of blend together really well. There. It's actually very difficult to you know separate those layers if you like. But I'm pretty sure it does have both in it. Let me just check on this. So yeah, barley, oats and wheat in this one. So yeah, I did wonder if it might have just been um, a slightly smoother wheat, but no, it has all three in them. Um, so yeah, it's 
It's just interesting. And that's maybe another thing if they've got organic oats and organic wheat in this, but they blend together really, really well in this beer. Now, if we focus on that middle third of the palate as well, it's interesting because I don't get as much of a kind of word as original brown sugary sort of thing out of it as I'd kind of mentioned before. So that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, the, you do get a little touch, you know, the further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel a little bit of the kind of Werther's original, you can feel a little bit of the kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy kind of thing uh, coming out of it. There's a wee bit of a sweet caramel on the very middle of your tongue. Um, so there's a wee bit of a kind of, as I say, a wee bit of a kind of concentrate sweet caramel in the middle of the tongue, but it's quite minimal, it's like a little tiny circle actually, but then as you move further out from that, you get a little bit more of a kind of Werther's original type uh, quality with this one. But, um, yeah, it's, um, It is nice. It is. I do like that. I think the thing that you're also going to find with this beer is that the the malty side of it kind of mellows out and it just smoothens out and thickens up a little bit more that you drink of it as well. So it's a really interesting beer from that perspective. Actually, the organic grains I think are giving it something a bit different, but it really gets almost creamier and creamier the further that you go into the aftertaste. But other than what we said, I don't think there's too much to say about the middle third of your palate. So let's focus on the back third of your your tongue then. So a border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again you get a little bit of a bready build up in there, a wee bit of a bread crust in the base of that back third of your palate. It's kind of interesting. So underneath, uh, you know, underneath that you get a nice little bit of a, um, as we say, underneath that you get a nice little bit of a kind of um, soft barley malt kind of thing in there, a little bit of a kind of soft white bready character as we said, a little bit of the thicker wheat on top of that, don't get so much of the oats, but then on top of all that you can feel that thicker, more kind of yeasty quality coming out of the beer for sure. So, on top of all of that, um, you know, in that kind of yeasty note there, what you'll feel is that on the back third of your palate, the flavour's taller. And as you come further forward, it just condenses down a wee bit. Then as you go into the middle third of your palate, it squashes down a little bit more. And again, I do like how this um, how this goes together. But, um, yeah, within that kind of more yeasty component, it's quite, you know, it's actually quite a thick yeasty note that you get out of this. And I don't know if that's maybe due to the organic grains. It, it actually... I'm, what I'm finding in this beer is that the yeast and you know the different layers of the malt base they really blend together very very well actually it's very difficult to get the same kind of levels of separation in this beer that you find in a sort of non-organic beer actually which is then that's that's kind of interesting so yeah just bear that in mind when you think about this one but I think that's all we need to say about the kind of malty and yeasty side of the beer the middle third and the back third of your palate at least but uh, yeah on the uh, hoppy side of things then, let's look at that. But yeah, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, uh, of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, it gets a little bit more kind of, you can feel there's quite a nice big green component to this one. It's actually got a wee bit of dankness to it, this beer as well, which is kind of interesting. And um, so there are a few kind of almost piney resiny notes underneath it. But as you move further forward, the floral aromatic notes and the big floral, um, as you see, the big floral arom aromatistic coming out of this one really is great. But then round the front curve of the palette, it's certainly brighter and uh, it's certainly brighter and more um, kind of grassy in a sense. So I like how that goes together. But I think the. Um, I think around the front curve of the palate, the grassy notes in this one, they have got a wee bit of zestiness to them, but they actually come across as quite wet and leafy, but at the same time really fresh. So that's an interesting point about this. I wonder if this could be cryo-hopped. I'm not 100% sure, but I do wonder if it's more, if 
but it's kind of cryo hot because it's just got that lovely the oiliness in this beer as well it's very smooth um yeah but the, well that grassy character is it's just very very smooth uh, and that's the whole vibe of this beer it's just how smooth and sort of slick and oily it is actually so quite a few bits of food for thought in this review that's for that's for sure but uh yeah i think we can you know i think we can try and break this one down yeah a little bit more from the fruity side of things so i think we've covered the green component as much as we need to so front third of your palate then border region between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of a bready build up in there you can feel the base of that front third of your palate is a more kind of um you can feel a bit of the kind of wheaty note in there and it's a little bit thicker actually but still very very smooth and then sitting on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the hops so at the back of the front third of your palate you've certainly got a little bit more of um you've certainly got a little bit more of a kind of passion fruity note to it but as you move further forward there's a little bit more of a um kind of oily mango in there and as i say i think it's maybe gallic i've got a feeling that this beer could be galaxy citra and maybe mosaic because yeah you get a nice you get the pungent passion fruit which will both if it is could be both citra and galaxy you get a bit of an oily mango in there then you get a lovely kind of bright pineapple note to it and just a wee bit of apricot underneath and it's the pineapple that makes me think galaxy and the mango that makes me think citra but then if you move into the front half of that front third of your tongue for me there's quite a distinctive oily kind of tangerine note and that would be mosaic the little bit of earthiness you get out of this beer makes me think about mosaic as well but whatever it is that's in this it's something that's quite familiar and i think it's a combination that i've had before so i think citra galaxy and uh and mosaic in this one uh, i think there's three i think there is three hops in it i think there are, there are three different hops in this one and it could you know the other option is it could be victoria's secret instead of galaxy uh but uh yeah not 100 percent sure but i suspect pardon me it's something like that um so yeah an interesting beer this one it, nothing really unexpected if you like just the way that all these kind of layers in the malty base mix together that's the the big thing about this one for sure so uh yeah no more uh you know no worries about this one at all but certainly a very nicely blended beer so let's round off this review with the uh the mouthfeel then let's look at that so in terms of the, um, how do we say, in terms of the, <coughs> the mouthfeel of this one then, I'd say, uh, I took a few drops down the wrong, to the wrong tube there, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say that this is actually pushing towards full body, it's top end to mid body, bottom end to full body, and it's kind of in there, the carbonation is very, very smooth, it's got a nice big oily slickness and kind of creaminess to it actually which is nice, but you do get a wee bit of that chalky thing, as I say, which I suspect is the organic grains. I've always found that with organic beers. But yeah, hoppy bitterness, I think this one, I think this one's a bit more, I think this has got about 50-ish IBUs. It really does get a little bit more bitter the further that you go into the aftertaste. But like we said, the malt base is really smooth, but still quite thick, and there's a slight degree of sweetness to it. Then you've got some nice, big, oily, juicy, fruity characters to this one as well. But um, yeah, the way it goes together, I think, is... Um, is very very nice so again it gets a big thumbs up from me so uh, yeah the fruity juicy side of this one it certainly is quite nice and i think this is whatever hop combination they've used in this it is certainly something that's uh, quite familiar it's very difficult to play guess the hops these days with all the different hops that are out there but uh, yeah i think we can um Leave it at that for this one. So uh, yeah, this one was the Api Lairepme, or Imperial IPA to change the name around, coming in at 8% EBV from Steve Various Braggery up in Gothenburg. And uh, this one is supposed to be an all organic IPA. So interesting, a few interesting points to take away from this one. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are. From Steve Barrett's, and we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the very near future. But until the next time, Slanja, Skull, and I will catch you guys soon. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and I'm sure we'll review another Steve Barrett's beer at some point very soon. Slanja, Skull, and cheers.